Let's talk about shrimp dinners. These are three of my favorite shrimp dinners and they're perfect for weeknights. Two of them take less than 15 minutes from prep to plate and one of them takes under 30 minutes. Let's get our shrimp on. Now the first recipe is our curried shrimp rolls or wraps. That's the way we like to do them because we do that whole low carb thing, but you can do them with hot dog rolls or low carb wraps like we do them. Now I kind of stole this idea from our trip to Nantucket where they do the lobster roll thing, cold lobster rolls. When I first bit into a cold lobster roll, I didn't know what to think, but then I tasted it and I was like, good Lord, I need to make this at home and more affordable. Bring on the shrimp. And I wanted to kind of make it my own a little bit, so that's where the curry powder comes in. And let me tell you, the flavor combination of all of these will blow your little mind. Here's all you need to make this fantastic dinner. Quarter cup mayo, the juice of one lemon, three quarter teaspoon of curry powder, salt and pepper, one pound of shrimp, two stalks of celery diced. And if you're doing the whole hot dog thing, go with four split sliced hot dog buns. Not my favorite hot dog buns, to be honest, but they're perfect for what we're about to do with them. Or you can go with the low carb wraps. I like the mission ones, the carb balance ones. I know it's mostly marketing, but they are lower carb than the normal tortilla wraps. So I go with those. Now start by combining your mayo, lemon juice, diced celery, curry powder, and salt and pepper. Combine all that together and then cover it and put it in the fridge when you're done. If you're using the hot dog buns, go ahead and put a slab of butter into a nice hot pan and get that nice warmed up. And then go ahead and toast each side of the hot dog buns in that butter to get them nice toasty on each side. You're gonna wanna do that. If you're doing the wrap route, like, ooh, wrap route, that's fun. If you're doing the wrap route like we are, go ahead and toast one side of the wraps in that butter just to kind of toast them up and add a little flavor and crunch and crispiness to the outside of those wraps. Season your shrimp with salt and pepper. You don't have to go heavy here because we've got so much seasoning that they're gonna go into. And you're gonna season them in that hot skillet for about 45 to 60 seconds per side. And they cook quick, so keep an eye on them. You just want them to get them opaque throughout. It's really easy to overcook shrimp, and that's probably one of the biggest mistakes that people make with shrimp. When they're done, move your shrimpies over to your cutting board and go ahead and just chop them up. You can chop them into big chunks or little chunks. You can dice them up as fine, as small as you want. I like a mixture of both, like some small chunks and some large chunks in there. Kind of imagine how you would like a lobster chunks, but just a much cheaper shrimp. Now go ahead and pull that mayo mixture right out of the fridge and add your diced up shrimp right into that mixture. Stir it all up and then just begin to fill your hot dog buns or your wraps with them as much as you want for each plate. And then I like to take them and dust them with a little bit of celery seed. You don't have to do that part. It's just something I like to do. It adds a tiny little texture piece to it that I think it's kind of missing. You can also top it with some arugula or, or some fresh crispy greens like that. And I promise you, you'll be so surprised about how much flavor is packed into these little wraps or hot dog buns. It is absolutely incredible and definitely one of our favorites that we do every single week. And this next one is definitely one that we do often just because it's so delicious and it comes together so fast. Definitely another one under 15 minutes, just like the curry shrimp ones. This is shrimp with brown butter and almonds and green beans. And here's what you need. Four tablespoons of unsalted butter, yes four tablespoons. Don't worry, so it's all good. One pound of shrimpies, one pound of fresh green beans, a quarter cup of sliced almonds. You can go ahead and get whole almonds if you want to and chop them up, or you can buy the sliced ones, however you prefer. And two tablespoons of capers. That's it, that's all you need. Those are all the ingredients to this recipe. Go ahead and add one inch of water to your pot and then bring that to a boil. Add your green beans with a nice pinch of salt and then cover them. And you're gonna cook those beans for about five to seven minutes in that pot. I suggest tasting them at five minutes to see if they're at the doneness that you like. Some people like their green beans a little more on the crunchy side. Some people like them more on the overcooked side. You do you, but go ahead and taste them at the five minute mark and see what you think. Give them a little longer if you like them softer. Now, while your green beans are cooking, go ahead and season up your shrimp with salt and pepper and get a skillet nice and hot. I like to preheat my skillet on medium high to the point where I can do the light frost effect, add a little bit of water. Once that water turns into little balls of water and then they don't disappear, they kind of roll around like mercury. That's when I know I've got a really nice hot pan to cook with. Then I back the heat down to medium and I toss my butter in and get that melted and then I add the shrimp. So we're gonna add one tablespoon of butter to the pan, then add our shrimp. Again, just the same as the other recipe, 45 to 60 seconds per side until they're opaque throughout. 
Now go ahead and remove your shrimp and set them in a warm place. I like to put them on a plate, cover them with a paper towel, and toss them in the microwave to stay warm, not to cook. Now add the rest of your butter. If you're keeping track, yes, that's three tablespoons of butter. You're gonna add that butter to that same pan that you cooked the shrimp in. And then we're going to add our quarter cup of sliced almonds and get that stirred around in there. You really wanna to try to lift that fond off the bottom of the pan. That's the crispy bits left behind by the shrimp and get that incorporated into your sauce. After you cook your almonds in that butter for about three to four minutes, go ahead and add your two tablespoons of capers. I love capers. They're so salty and bright and they just make everything so tasty. After you toss your capers in, go ahead and just turn your heat off on your pan. Go ahead and begin to plate your dinner. Start with your green beans first, add your shrimp on top of those guys, and then plate by topping your shrimp and your green beans with some nice buttery almond caper sauce. This is so good and so delectable. I mean, a delectable is a really nice term for this. The flavors in this dish complement each other so well, you will not believe that it came together in about 10 minutes. Next up, cheddar grits, bacon, and shrimp. Yeah. Now, I didn't use cheddar grits. I used rutabaga because we do that whole low carb thing. But if you want to do grits, go ahead and get a package of grits from the store and cook it according to the directions on the back of the package. Okay. You can make your own grits if you want to. I'm not going to get into that in this video. I'm going to show you how to make mashed rutabaga with this. So let's get going. Here's what you're going to need one whole rutabaga for the low carb route or one package of grits from the store if you're going to do it that way. One cup of sharp cheddar cheese, four slices of thick bacon, one pound of shrimp, eight to 10 cherry tomatoes, two green onions, a quarter cup of heavy cream, and three tablespoons of butter. For our rutabaga, I want you to peel it and then slice it into chunks. And then you're gonna toss it into a pot, fill that pot with water, add a nice big pinch of salt, get it on your stove on high, and boil them for about 12 to 15 minutes or until you can really easily pierce that rutabaga with a fork. Now cook your bacon in a skillet or in the oven until your desired level of crispiness. I like mine crispy almost too crispy. Season your shrimp with salt and pepper and remove that bacon grease from the pan. Or you can cook your shrimp in it. I prefer not to. I feel like bacon grease adds too much of a greasy texture to this dish, but you do you. If you like cooking in the bacon grease and you want that extra flavor, go for it. Otherwise, remove it, leave the burnt bits in there. We're gonna, we're gonna want those, that's all good. But I'm gonna add a little bit of oil and then toss our shrimp in. And again, 45 to 60 seconds per side until they're cooked through and opaque throughout. I keep saying it, they cook fast. Keep an eye on them. Now at this point, your rutabaga is probably done. You wanna drain it in a strainer and then in that same pot, now mash your drained rutabaga. I prefer using a ricer. If you don't have one, I'll link in the description below. They're wonderful for potatoes. They're wonderful for this instance as well. After you have them all riced or mashed, go ahead and add your cheddar cheese and that butter and heavy cream mixture and stir it up to combine. Now it's time to plate your dinner. I like to start by placing a nice helping of rutabaga or grits down first, and then I top with the bacon quartered cherry tomatoes. Then I add my shrimp and I like to organize it right around and make it all nice and full and beautiful. Diced green onion and devour that, my friends. It is so filling, so satisfying, and so delicious and easy. Like always, I would love to know if you tried any of these recipes. Come back to this video after you've tried them and comment down below and let me know what you thought of them or how you would change them if you do them on your own. That's what's great about this whole thing is you can add your own mix. If you wanna add other ingredients to them, by all means, try it. You can't go wrong. Well, you can, but try it and see what happens. But be sure to share your creations with the group in the comment section. I appreciate you and I'll see you on the next one. And if you really like this video, make sure you save it for later, like it, and comment down below what you think. I'm always, I always wanna hear from you, you know that. And if you want more no bullshit recipes like these ones, click right up here for the next one.